If you're in the UK or Northern Europe, this is the video for you because I'm going to be going through the basic species that you're likely to encounter while spearfishing. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to 2021. As you can see, I'm still in the living room. UK is once again in a national lockdown, but we will still try and make spearfishing videos, mark my words. In this video today, we're going to be talking about species identification. Now, when you're new to spearfishing, I know how difficult it can be to try and identify fish underwater. Most of the photos that you see online are of fish out of water and they look drastically different when they're underwater. Now, this may not be a massive problem in the UK, but where I'm from in Australia, it can land you in a bit of hot water. Two species, a mangrove jack and a red bass. To the untrained eye, look very, very similar. One is a prized fish and one will land you a hefty fine with fisheries because there are no take species. It definitely pays to know your fish species. Obviously, I can't cover every single fish species that you will ever encounter in the UK, but this is a really solid foundation for those that are just starting out or if you've been diving for a while and just want to brush up on how to tell a golden gray mullet from a thick-lipped mullet. Let's kick this off with the flatfish species. They are very common here and the most common one that I've ever found is the European place. The European place, Plateuronic. Pl Pleuronectes, Pleuronectes platessa? Pleuronectes, Pleuronecte, plate. Place are a right eyed flatfish, meaning if the fish was swimming vertically like a normal fish, its eyes would be on the right hand side of the body. Place are commonly identified by the orange spots found on the top side of their body. The underside of their body is actually pearl white. Mostly found on sand, shale and mud type bottoms, they are fairly easy to spear once you find them and can often be taken with a knife or by hand. Depending on the bottom substrate, place will bury themselves. Now, for me, I have only ever seen this on very fine sand and when you do find them like this, they're very difficult to spot. All you'll often get is the faint outline of the fish and two eyes sticking up. When the water's dirty, this makes them even more difficult to find. Like all flatfish species, they are fantastic to eat and they have firm white fillets. If you're unsure if you've caught a place or a flounder, the easiest way to tell is run your finger along the lateral line of the place from the tail to the head. And if it's smooth, it's a place. If it's rough at all, it is a flounder. The common flounder is usually a right-eyed flatfish, but they can also be a left-eyed variant. They inhabit the same areas that you will find place in other flatfish species, and they can also sometimes have very faint orange dots. It's quite easy to tell these two species apart when they're side by side. When I was in Denmark for the Euro African Spearfishing Championships in 2019, one of the event coordinators, Nikolai Ilkus, demonstrated the difference between the place and the flounder, and it's really easy when he shows you. The flounder is like sandpaper here, sandpaper here and here, yeah? You're welcome to come by and touch. You can hear it if you're quiet. You can hear it, right? So, even though this one here has red dots, it is not a place, okay? This is a hybrid between two species, but it is a flounder. A place has very clear orange dots. It is very smooth. It is almost transparent, where a flounder is white. See the difference? Yeah, transparent. Yeah. And, it, and it has, uh, you can clearly see the bones in here. The next two flatfish are what I would describe as the turbo tasties. That is the brill and the turbot. Admittedly, I've never actually seen either of these fish underwater before, so the footage supplied for this next segment is from a friend of mine, Michael Bjur. He is a Dane that resides in Norway and he has some world-class footage. That's the only way I can describe it. It's simply world-class footage of Scandinavian species on his YouTube channel. I've left a link in the description, so make sure you check that out. But massive thank you to Michael for supplying this footage. The turbot is a European culinary icon, one of the most expensive fish you can buy and the taste is incredible. They are the masters of camouflage and more often than not will bury themselves in sand with their fins, making them incredibly difficult to spot. 
Turbot changed the color of their skin to match the bottom that they are sitting on. Look at the black dots this fish is sporting to match the holes in the sand. Turbot are so confident in their own camouflage, I actually know a few Danish divers that won't even spear these fish. They will just go down and grab them by the head. They aren't difficult to spear at all, but finding one is the greatest challenge, especially in deep or dirty water. One thing to note when shooting fish on sand or a mud tight bottom is your flopper will get stuck shut if you shoot into it. You can see here Michael jiggling his spear to make sure the flopper is open before attempting to land this fish. This here is an absolute whopper turbot. I mean, double whopper, add cheese, add bacon, huge fish. But the ever so slightly different fish in front of that turbot is what we call a brill. The brill is often confused with the turbot. They look very similar, especially when they're camouflaged as well as this guy is here. I've never actually eaten a brill, but I'm told they're right up there with turbot for taste. Compared with the turbot, the brill is much more almond shaped, but the easiest way to tell them apart is to simply close your eyes and use your hands. The skin of a brill is totally smooth, whereas the turbot has little nobules all over it, little tiny stumps, and it's very rough. The brill, very smooth. That's the easiest way to tell them apart. Brill, smooth, turbot, rough. Job done. The brill is a bit longer than the turbot. The turbot is very like this, yeah? The, the brill is a little longer, but it's very smooth, yeah? This one is not smooth at all. The next iconic species of flatfish in the UK and Northern Europe that you will find is the Dover sole. And I will attempt the Latin because it is very easy. Solia, solia. In France, it is extremely popular in the traditional dish, sole minière. I've never actually seen a sole in the water and this footage was given to me by Ryan Edwards, a lovely chap from Oxford that I met last year while I was waiting for a locksmith to come and help me break into my vehicle because I'd actually lost the key at sea when I was getting out of my wetsuit but that story is for another time. Ryan has a great YouTube channel based in England, so make sure you check that out. I will link it in the description. Other species of flatfish you may find in the UK that are not very common or very small are the lemon sole, the top knot, or the dab. I just couldn't help but the dab, the dab. The lemon sole is fairly easy to identify given the shape and coloration, but they are also known as the thick-lipped flounder. They have some real Botox lips going on here, as you can see. The lemon sole can look similar to another small flatfish called the top knot. However, the top knot has a mouth much more like a turbot and an underslung jaw that extends out to suck in its prey into its mouth. The top knot is commonly found on wrecks or in the stomach of 10 pound bass. The last flatfish you may encounter is a dab. It looks a lot like a regular flounder, but the lateral line has a massive curve in it near the pectoral fin. This is actually a regular flounder, but if it was a dab, the lateral line would be shaped like this. Whilst you are extremely unlikely to encounter an Atlantic halibut in the UK, unless you're diving in Northern Scotland around the Shetland Islands, it's worth looking at them to avoid any confusion with the other flatfish species. The giveaway for a halibut over any other flatfish is the triangular shaped tail, and they're also massive. If you really want to remind yourself what a halibut looks like, you can head over to diveeverywhere.co, pick yourself up a halibut t-shirt and wear it around all day long. The next iconic species for the UK and Europe is the sea bass. What do we have? Sea bass. You can't really mistake these fish with anything else. Early on in the diving season, I have found the fish tend to be a smaller average size. During the autumn and early winter months, bass will shoal up offshore in preparation for breeding and migration. That's where you'll find the biggest fish. Bass are accessible to divers of all levels and capabilities. They can be found on deep offshore pinnacles like this,
You can also find bass in water you could almost stand up in like this one. Unfortunately, I missed that fish in the dying minutes of a competition. In my experience, bass are the most targeted species of fish by spearfishers in the UK. Continuing on with the silverfish, we come across the humble mullet. There are three species that you can find in the UK, the thick-lipped, the thin-lipped, and the golden gray mullet. They are each very difficult to identify when they're swimming past you in dirty water, but once they're on dry land and you can get a good look at the fish, it's easy to identify which is which. The first is the thick-lipped mullet. As the name suggests, they have thick lips. In fact, the lips on a thick-lipped mullet at their widest point will be at least two-thirds of the diameter of the eye. Other distinguishing anatomical features include the knobbly bits on the lips, which are absent in the golden grey mullet. When looking at the jugular, the gill plate covers align nearly parallel to each other. This is not the case with the thin-lipped or the golden grey mullet. The last feature is when the pectoral fin is folded forward, it touches the eye. It's a whopper, isn't it? That is a whopping mullet. The thin-lipped mullet, as the name suggests, has thin lips. I mean, who comes up with these names? I mean, literally zero effort put in. Oh, it's a mullet and it's got thin lips. Let's call it a thin-lipped mullet. I mean, what the f The thickest part of the upper lip on a thin-lipped mullet will be less than half the diameter of the eye. On the thin-lipped mullet, the jugular interspace is ovular shaped, which is the same as the golden grey mullet. However, to determine this species from the golden grey mullet, you must look at the pectoral fin. On the thin-lipped mullet, when the pectoral fin is folded forward, it will not touch the eye, or only just in very juvenile fish. The final species of mullet is the golden grey mullet. The golden grey mullet is a little easier to identify from the other two as it has a golden patch of scales on the cheek, hence the name. The jugular is also ovular like the thin-lipped mullet, but the pectoral fin will reach at least the middle of the eye when folded forward, as you can see here. It took some serious effort and research to work out an easy way to determine these three species from each other, and I must say thank you to Joe PK for providing the footage for the jugular interspace of the thick-lipped mullet. Say that five times fast. Jugular interspace of the thick-lipped mullet. 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 Nailed it. There are a variety of wrasse species in the UK, but the one that attracts the most attention is the Ballon wrasse. This is because they are generally of good size and very easy to get close to. They can range from dark green to orange, depending on the sex and the age. There is a bit of controversy about these fish with some people saying they are completely inedible. I have found that to be completely untrue. A number of occasions I have not speared anything and I have taken a Ballon Ras and they are okay to make a meal. They aren't amazing fish to eat, but you can definitely eat them. Another argument I often hear is that they are too easy to spear and should be left alone. While this is true to some degree, I don't see anybody that is making those claims swimming over flatfish and leaving them alone on account of them being too easy to spear. Research I have done suggests that they are quite slow to reach sexual maturity at approximately six years old for male fish, so they are susceptible to overfishing. Make up your own mind whether you want to take them or not. The pouting or pout is a small cod-like fish that tends to live around wrecks and caves. They can grow to a decent enough size that you can get a feed from them and they taste very similar to cod. One species that is extremely similar to the pouting is called the poor cod. Poor cod have a much larger eye than the pouting, but the certain way to identify a pouting from the poor cod is where the anal fin starts in relation to the dorsal fin. The anal fin on the pout starts in line with the dorsal fin, whereas on the poor cod, it would start back here. If you've made it this far in the video and you've learned something, please hit the like button on this video. It actually makes a difference. Leading on from cod-like fishes, let's talk about the Atlantic cod. This is your traditional British fish and chips, mushy peas on the side, vinegar on the chips, Atlantic cod. 
These fish have been decimated in the UK over the last few decades and it's not something that you will commonly come across unless you really go looking for them at the right time of the year in the right spots. The only other fish you may confuse an Atlantic cod with is the haddock. However, the Atlantic cod has a white lateral line and haddock does not. Atlantic cod can be found in very shallow water, even in the UK. This seven kilogram fish here was taken in six meters of water just outside of Copenhagen. Cod also love to live in caves and wrecks, anywhere that they can shelter out of the current. This cod is around five kilograms and deep inside a rocky cave. When looking for cod on wrecks, you may find them out in the open early on, but as soon as you start pulling the trigger, they will go deep inside the wreck and this requires skillful extraction to get them out without causing you a lot of drama. Along with the sea bass, the pollock is one of the main targets for the UK spearfisher. They are easily identified by their long, sharp snout, broad, powerful tail, and the way they move underwater is seemingly like a torpedo. Smaller pollock are quite common in shallow water. However, I have only found larger specimens, two kilograms plus, in water deeper than around eight meters, with my largest UK fish off the side of a pinnacle at around 23 meters. In the southeastern parts of England, the pollock don't seem to be found much larger than around two kilograms, probably due to the lack of kelp found in Sussex. If you move west towards Dorset, Devon and Cornwall, that is where you will find the larger fish to be much more prolific. When looking for pollock in kelp covered areas, it is important to look below the kelp. They will often be cruising through the gutters below the kelp height, just like this one. Pollock are a very mild tasting fish and they are perfect for a beer battered fish and chips. The only other fish that you could possibly confuse a pollock with is a coal fish. The coal fish is closely related to the pollock but they are easily distinguished by the lateral line. The coal fish has a distinct white lateral line whereas this is absent in the pollock. I've seen coal fish in the Republic of Ireland and the southwest of England. They tend to like pinnacles with a lot of kelp. Smaller fish can be quite curious and easy to approach. The flesh of a coal fish tends to be a lot more pink than the snow white fillets of the pollock and tends to be a little more oily. The last fish on our list is the black bream. These fish are quite common on the south coast of England and I have found them on all sorts of terrain as well. Flat shale type bottom, man-made structures, and pinnacles covered in kelp. They are not often seen as singular fish, but rather larger shoals. Black bream can be very easy to shoot, it just depends on the day. They are also quite social fish and will shoal up with bass. I have seen black bream as shallow as four meters all the way down to 30 meters plus on offshore areas. There aren't really any other fish in the UK that look like a black bream unless you are lucky enough to come across a sago or a white sea bream. The only other fish that remotely looks like a black bream is the gilthead sea bream. Of course, there are other species that you may encounter in the UK, such as dogfish, skates, rays, gurnard, anglerfish, triggerfish, but we would be here all day discussing every single species that is possible to be found in the water in the UK and Northern Europe. This should give you a very good foundation on what you're likely to encounter. And above all, I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you have, give it a like, it actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one. How would you pronounce this? P-L-E-U-R-O-N, Nectars. Pleuronectes, Pleuronectes platessa, Pleuronan, Pleuronectes platessa, Pleuronectes platessa, Pleuronectes platessa, the European place.
definitely not keeping up the Latin for this video. I'll put titles instead.